namaste. <laughs> so if I'm going to call myself a shaman, I have to do some shamanism, right? <laughs> well, how about an oracle? How about divination? How about a real-time chat with the cosmos, with the mother, about what's going on here? You know, so recently I've been thinking over a lot what to do about this channel. It's like I don't feel like I'm getting through to people. And maybe the problem is a lack of context. Because in all the previous videos, all 1,200 of however many there are, YouTube doesn't show you a count anymore. So I don't even know. <laughs> In all those videos, I focus very narrowly on the internals of spiritual growth, on the methods, on the language, on the activities, different types of meditation, and so on. But I don't really talk very much about how we fit into what's going on in the world. Well, the I Ching is the voice of the world. The I Ching is the book of changes. And change is the most characteristic thing about the world. In other words, the only thing that doesn't change in the world is that it changes. <laughs> All arisings go through six changes. Conception, gestation, birth, production of byproducts, decay, and death. These six stages apply to everything that exists in the world. And the seventh stage is return, rebirth in the case of living beings, or recycling and transformation into some other objects in terms of the objects, the non-living things in the world. So the I Ching is there to counsel us, to advise us, and to speak with the voice of change and tell us what's happening. Now, one of the things about the I Ching is one should not use it lightly, casually. Uh, if you do that, the I Ching will come and call you a fool. <laughs> Try it, you'll see. So, in the I Ching, there are 64 hexagrams. And the 64 hexagrams, each one represents a certain flavor of change or becoming. And then on top of that, any one of the 64 hexagrams can turn into any other of the 64 hexagrams. So for each of the 64 hexagrams, there are 64 possible changes. First one is no change. It stays the way it is. And then there's 63 more, because it could change into any of the other 63. So you have 64 times 64 times 63 or 64 to the 63rd power. Possible changes. Each change has an image, a symbol, a metaphor, which, with a little bit of thought, you can apply to the present situation. And in that way, we get to see what's going on. So I did two readings. I asked the I Ching, first of all, What's going on with this channel? And second, I asked, what to do about it? So now let's go through those two readings and the meaning and interpretation. Okay, so let's toss the first line. Mix up the coins really good. And we get three yin. That's a six. 
changing in. Second line. Yang, yang, yin. That's an eight. Non changing yin. Two yin, one yang. Two, two, and three, seven. Non changing yang. Three yin again, six. Changing yin. Yin, yin, yang, seven. Non changing yang. Yin, yin, yang. Eight. Stable yin. And throw them. So what do we get? Three, three, two. That's an eight. Stable yin. Triple yang. That's a nine. Changing young. Yin, yin, young. Two, two, three, seven. Stable young. Yin, yin, yang, seven, stable yang. Okay, so we did two readings, and the first hexagram, in answer to the question, what is going on with the channel, was number 39, obstruction. And when those two lines change, it changes into hexagram two, number 49, the cauldron. And the second reading, what to do about it, we got number 18, work on what has been spoiled. And that changes into hexagram 52, keeping still, mountain. So now I'm going to read through the readings from the oracle text on each one of these hexagrams, and then we'll talk about the application. So first of all is 39, Qian, obstruction. The above is the trigram Ka'an, the abysmal water. Below, the trigram Kang, keeping still, mountain. The hexagram pictures a dangerous abyss lying before us and a steep, inaccessible mountain rising behind us. We are surrounded by obstacles. At the same time, since the mountain has the attribute of keeping still, there is implicit a hint as to how we can extricate ourselves. The hexagram represents obstructions that appear in the course of time, but that can and should be overcome. Therefore, all the instruction given is directed to overcoming them. The judgment, obstruction. The southwest furthers. The northeast does not further. It furthers one to see the great man. Perseverance brings good fortune. The southwest is the region of retreat. The northeast, that of advance. 
Here, an individual is confronted by obstacles that cannot be overcome directly. In such a situation, it is wise to pause in view of the danger and to retreat. However, this is merely a preparation for overcoming the obstructions. One must join forces with friends of like mind and put himself under the leadership of a man equal to the situation. Then one will succeed in removing the obstacles. This requires the will to persevere, just when one apparently must do something that leads away from his goal. This unswerving inner purpose brings good fortune in the end. An obstruction that lasts only for a time is useful for self-development. This is the value of adversity. The image. Water on the mountain. The image of obstruction. Thus, the superior man turns his attention to himself and molds his character. Difficulties and obstructions throw a man back upon himself, while the inferior man seeks to put the blame on other persons, bewailing his fate. The superior man seeks the error within himself, and through this introspection, the external obstacle becomes for him an occasion for inner enrichment and education. The lines. Six at the beginning means going leads to obstructions, coming meets with praise. When one encounters an obstruction, the important thing is to reflect on how best to deal with it. When threatened with danger, one should not strive blindly to go ahead, for this only leads to complications. The correct thing is, on the contrary, to retreat for the time being, not to give up the struggle, but to await the right moment for action. Six in the fourth place means going leads to obstructions, coming leads to union. This describes a situation that cannot be managed single-handed. In such a case, the direct way is not the shortest. If a person were to forge ahead on his own strength and without the necessary preparations, he would not find the support he needs and would realize too late that he has been mistaken in his calculations, inasmuch as the conditions on which he hoped he could rely would prove to be inadequate. In this case, it is better, therefore, to hold back for the time being and to gather together trustworthy companions who can be counted upon for help in overcoming the obstructions. So now, the two changing lines marked with circles change from yin to yang, and that changes from 39, obstruction, to 49, ko, revolution. Above is the trigram tui, the joyous lake, and below, the trigram li, the clinging fire. The Chinese character for this hexagram means in its original sense an animal's pelt, which is changed in the course of the year by molting. From this word is carried over to apply to the moltings in political life the great revolutions connected with changes in governments. The two trigrams making up the hexagram are the same two that appear in Kuwe, opposition, number 38. That is, the two younger daughters, Li and Tui. But while there, the elder of the two daughters is above, and what results is essentially only an opposition of tendencies, here the younger daughter is above. The influences are in actual conflict, and the forces combat each other like fire and water, lake, each trying to destroy the other. Hence, the idea of revolution. The judgment, revolution. On your own day you are believed. Supreme success, furthering through perseverance. Remorse disappears. Political revolutions are extremely grave matters. They should be undertaken only under stress of direst necessity when there is no other way out. Not everyone is called to this task, but only the man who has the confidence of the people and even he only when the time is ripe. 
he must then proceed in the right way so that he gladdens the people and, by enlightening them, prevents excesses. Furthermore, he must be quite free of selfish aims and must really relieve the need of the people. Only then does he have nothing to regret. Times change, and with them their demands. Thus the seasons change in the course of the year. In the world cycle also there are spring and autumn in the life of peoples and nations, and these call for social transformations. The image, fire in the lake, the image of revolution. Thus the superior man sets the calendar in order and makes the seasons clear. Fire below and the lake above combat and destroy each other. So, too, in the course of the year, a combat takes place between the forces of light and the forces of darkness, eventuating in the revolution of the seasons, and man is able to adjust himself in advance to the demands of the different times. Then, the second reading, asking the question, now what to do about it, gives us the hexagram number 18, Ku. Work on what has been spoiled. The upper trigram, Ken, keeping still, mountain. And the lower trigram, Sun, the gentle, wind. The Chinese character, Ku, represents a bowl in whose contents worms are breeding. This means decay. It has come about because the gentle indifference in the lower trigram has come together with the rigid inertia of the upper, and the result is stagnation. Since this implies guilt, the conditions embody a demand for removal of the cause. Hence, the meaning of the hexagram is not simply what has been spoiled, but work on what has been spoiled. The Judgment Work on what has been spoiled has supreme success. It furthers one to cross the great water. Before the starting point, three days. After the starting point, three days. What has been spoiled through man's fault can be made good again through man's work. It is not immutable fate, as in the time of standstill that has caused the state of corruption, but rather the abuse of human freedom. Work toward improving conditions promises well because it accords the possibilities of the time. We must not recoil from work and danger, symbolized by crossing the great water, but must take hold energetically. Success depends, however, on proper deliberation. This is expressed by the lines, before the starting point, three days, after the starting point, three days. We must first know the cause of corruption before we can do away with them. Hence, it is necessary to be cautious during the time before the start. Then we must see to it that the new way is safely entered upon so that a relapse may be avoided. Therefore, we must pay attention to the time after the start. Decisiveness and energy must take the place of inertia and indifference that have led to decay in order that the ending may be followed by a new beginning. The image. The wind blows low upon the mountain. The image of decay. Thus the superior man stirs up the people and strengthens their spirit. When the wind blows low on the mountain, it is thrown back and spoils the vegetation. This contains a challenge to improvement. It is the same with debasing attitudes and fashions. They corrupt human society. His methods likewise must be derived from the two trigrams, but in such a way that their effects unfold in orderly sequence. The superior must first remove stagnation by stirring up public opinion, as the wind stirs up everything, and must strengthen and tranquilize the character of the people as a mountain gives tranquility and nourishment to all that grows in its vicinity. The lines. Nine in the second place means setting right what has been spoiled by the mother. 
one must not be too persevering. This refers to mistakes that, as a result of weakness, have brought about decay. Hence the symbol, what has been spoiled by the mother. In setting things right in such a case, a certain gentle consideration is called for. In order not to wound, one should not attempt to proceed too drastically. So now the second line, yang, changes to yin. And so hexagram 18, work on what has been spoiled, changes to hexagram 52, keeping still, mountain. Above the trigram, ken, keeping still, mountain. And below is also ken. The image of this hexagram is the mountain, the youngest son of heaven and earth. The male principle is at the top because it strives upward by nature. The female principle is below since the direction of its movement has come to its normal end. In its application to man, the hexagram turns upon the problem of achieving a quiet heart. It is very difficult to bring quiet to the heart. While Buddhism strives for rest through an ebbing away of all movement in nirvana, the Book of Changes holds that rest is merely a state of polarity that always posits movement as its complement. Possibly the words of the text embody directions for practice of yoga. The Judgment Keeping Still Keeping his back still so that he no longer feels his body. He goes into his courtyard and does not see his people. No blame. True quiet means keeping still when the time has come to keep still, and going forward when the time has come to go forward. In this way, rest and movement are in agreement with the demands of the time, and thus there is light in life. The hexagram signifies the end and the beginning of all movement. The back is named because in the back are located all the nerve fibers that mediate movement. If the movement of these spinal nerves is brought to a standstill, the ego with its restlessness disappears, as it were. When a man has thus become calm, he may turn to the outside world. He no longer sees in it the struggle and tumult of individual beings, and therefore he has that true peace of mind which is needed for understanding the great laws of the universe and for acting in harmony with them. Whoever acts from these deep levels makes no mistakes. The image. Mountains standing close together. The image of keeping still. Thus the superior man does not permit his thoughts to go beyond his situation. The heart thinks constantly. This cannot be changed, but the movements of the heart, that is, a man's thoughts, should restrict themselves to the immediate situation. All thinking that goes beyond this only makes the heart sore. So that might seem like a lot of information, and it is, but it actually only scratches the surface. That's the King Wen interpretation. And there are other books, other interpretations that add more depth. But we're not going to go into those right now because we have enough, more than enough, actually, to accomplish the purpose of divination. So we asked the question, what's going on with the channel? And the answer we got, there's an obstruction. Something is stopping the channel's growth or stopping it from changing into the form that it needs to be to help more people. And so in typical I Ching style, it says, the problem is you. <laughs> so instead of running out and doing something or other, it's saying, you look into yourself, take a break, go to the mountains in the Southwest. And that's exactly what I'm doing. 
I'm going to Kodai Kaanal, which is up in the mountains near Polony. And I, there's a wonderful place there where there's actually, there's a lake in the mountains. <laughs> so I'm going there and it's called Manavarur. And so Manavarur is very well known, a famous place which has tremendously good vibes and energy and it's an ecological paradise in the middle of a huge state forest. So anyway, I'm going there. So then what? Work on what has been spoiled. And what has been spoiled, and the way the hexagram expresses it with the changing lines and everything, is that it has been spoiled by being too lax by not being strict enough, by weakness, by laziness. But because this is uh, something done by the mother, it's not like we should persevere in correcting it too much because that would cause an injury, that would cause an offense, that would cause harm. Now, in the history of this channel, as you may know, it started out focused on the teaching of the Buddha. And then we kind of segued into meditation and Chinese yoga, the secret of the golden flower, and then a very long series on Nibbana. And then we came to the teaching of Ramana Maharshi, which is Advaita in the style of Shankaracharya. And so by looking into these things, we were able to polish and refine our views and our techniques. And then, because we felt that we were not reaching the mass or more popular aspect of people, we went deep into Sri Vidya because we felt we needed a teaching with practices of karma yoga and bhakti yoga as a foundation for the meditational teachings of Advaita and the Buddha's teaching. And so far, this has worked out, but now it's kind of reaching a, a stopping point and obstruction. So why is that? Well, it's because of insufficient rigor, probably on my part. <laughs> so the advice given is to cross the great water. And this is a very special phrase in I Ching, divination. To cross the great water really means the shamanic journey of passing through death to reach rebirth and life, new life. Sometimes it can mean actual death, but most times it means some psychological rebirth. That some old views or old ways of doing things need to die so that new ways can sprout up that are more appropriate to current conditions. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna take a shamanic journey, a uh, trip, uh, through the mountains <laughs> where there's lots of botanical uh, goodies available. So, you know, read between the lines. And uh, we're going to take a few days to have this journey cross the great water and to assimilate the results. And so for a few days, we're not gonna post anything. We're gonna remain silent and we're gonna practice a lot of sitting meditation. Like the hexagram says, make your back straight so that you don't feel anything. And then even if you don't take care of your people for a while, that's okay, no blame. 
So that pretty well describes a meditation retreat. I take a lot of meditation retreats, have you noticed? <laughs> That's what keeps me sane. That's what keeps me grounded. That's what keeps me ever fresh, full of ideas. And in fact, I have so many ideas that, you know, I have to say no to most of them, even though I'd love to do them all. You know, I'm past the point in my life when I could do that much work. <laughs> so that's okay. The main thing that has to happen is recasting this channel into a new form or format that better addresses the situation. So, of course, we have talked a great deal in the last few videos about the situation. And in fact, the whole last series started the same day that I cast the I Ching, asking these questions. So three days before you start, I cast it on Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. So tomorrow, early, early, I'm leaving. And then I'm going to be in the mountains at least three days until I get the situation and the, the resolution that I need. And so I'll be back in a week or so with hopefully <laughs> new ideas about how to help this channel. But one of the things the hexagram mentioned that, that is important for you is that it said, we need to get some organization of like-minded people. So what I'm thinking is that those viewers who have an interest, we need to form a discussion group and get our heads together about how to do this, how to revive this group. And so when I come back, I'm going to post uh, links and those who are inclined to contribute something, uh, we can join this and discretion group and put together some kind of solution. And of course, that will have the input of whatever experience I'm going to have in the mountains. So I'm really looking forward to that. And I'm looking forward to talking with you all about what we can do to help this channel. It's probably going to be a Skype conference. And it's probably going to start in a week or so. So please make a little bit of time, if you have the interest, to join the discussion group and make some contribution to the welfare of all the subscribers on this channel so that they may more easily approach ultimate enlightenment. Aung Tatsat. Aung Shakti Aung.